Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome you all to this NPTEL online discussion class. I am Madhuri Bhattacharya, a Prime Minister Research Fellow in Department of Chemistry, IIT Madras. So, this course has been taught by Professor Debashish Rai from Department of Chemistry, IIT Kharagpur. Here we are basically discussing uh, regarding some important inorganic materials, uh, their industrial preparation and utilization. So these are my details and you can contact me over my email IDs for your any queries or further clarifications. Uh, so far we have discussed regarding some, some materials like Uh, like peroxide materials, then some bulk and commodities materials, uh, fine materials and all, some basic inorganic materials, then nitrogen compounds, phosphorus compounds and sulfur compounds, some fertilizers also we have discussed, like nitrogen fertilizers, ammonium nitrate, phosphorus containing fertilizers. So today we will be discussing some halogen compounds, okay, and specifically fluoride compounds. So, coming to the first question. Yeah. First question is about sodium sulfide. Sodium sulfide structure is uh, which kind of structure it adapts and that is actually antifluoride structure. So if we see antifluoride structure it is just the reverse of fluoride structure means the calcium fluoride fluoride means uh, calcium fluoride whatever lattice occupation is observed in case of in calcium fluoride it will be just the reverse uh, in case of sodium sulfide so i will show you the structure
this is one unit cell now sodium in it to s structure is basically anti fluoride that means reverse fluoride structure okay so na plus being the smaller ion smaller here and s2 minus is larger larger ion so that is why it is just the reverse as in case of calcium fluoride fluoride so calcium 2 plus means cation is larger and anion F minus is smaller so that is why the lattice position of cations will be occupied by anions in case of Na2S because this is the larger ion now if we denote the lattice positions So larger, uh, smaller ion like sodium plus, it will occupy lattice points. Uh, basically, this is a FCC lattice, and then sulfide, it uh, it will occupy the tetrahedral holes formed by the FCC um, uh, F FCC lattice points. So tetrahedral holes having larger volume will be occupied by the larger ions, so sulfide ions. So if we denote the sodium ion position. In FCC cell, so these are the lattice points. Okay, total eight vertices are there in the cube, and then six facial face centered positions. This is the front face center, back face center, side face center another side face center then bottom face center and top face center okay and then so these are actually sodium sodium plus Sulfide, sulfides this will be occupied by the tetrahedral holes there are total 8 tetrahedral holes and each tetrahedral hole will contain one sulfide ion ok this is little difficult to visualize like if you can consider only one small cube you can see how many atoms are there
Okay. So this constitutes uh, one tetrahedral side, and this atom is occupying that side. Here I am considering this cell. I will highlight. This one only up to this, okay. Hmm, actually, one line is missing. This still I am talking about. This front cell. Okay, I think it is visible. So the tetrahedral sites are occupied by sulfide atoms. Is two minus denoted by green balls. So what will be the like uh, occupational number? We can say or fractional number. How many atoms are present per unit cell of Na2S? We can easily calculate. N plus will be total eight corners, so eight into contribution per unit cell of the lattice point is one eight because one lattice point is shared by eight unit cells, so one by eight plus six faces contains one atoms, yeah, like uh, six faces contains six atoms. So 6 into 1 by 2 since each face is shared by 2 cubes. So 1 plus 3, 4. And then S2 minus total 8 tetrahedral holes into each tetrahedral hole is shared by 4 unit cell contribution per unit cell 1 by 4 equals to 2 so total 4 Na plus plus 2 S2 minus to Na to S therefore Z of Z value of Na to S equals to equals to number of 
molecules per unit cell. Right? Now, so this FCC is on data at a whole. Okay. And in case of calcium fluoride, it will be just the reverse. Like calcium will be occupying uh, tetrahedral holes being larger sized and F minus will occupy the FCC side. So calcium uh, will have calcium will have uh, effective uh, atom uh, effective number of atoms per unit cell as two and fluorine will have four. So giving rise to total two calcium fluoride molecule per unit cell. But the structure are just the reverse. Then moving to the next question uh, about polyphenylin sulfide PPS. So this is actually an organic polymer, polyphenyl sulf sulfide. Polyphenyl sulfide is actually an organic polymer consisting of aromatic rings cross-linked by sulfides. Okay, these are very, uh, very much uh, good for uh, polymers having uh, good electrical insulation property and also higher resistance for chemical and thermal attack. And PPS can be uh, like. Uh, it is actually insulating but it can be converted to semiconducting form by oxidation or using some uh, additives like dopants okay then moving to the next question fluorapatite fluorapatite is basically a phosphate material which type of material it is actually phosphate material uh, that is um, having this formula calcium 5 po4 whole thrice f and this is actually a hard crystalline solid although the, this is actually having several color but the pure form is colorless yeah because this is not containing any transition metal so we can expect uh, the pure form should be colorless and it is um, used as a important material for tooth enamel okay since we all know our tooth is made up uh, of uh, calcium and fluorine so tooth enamel can be is, um, like uh, can be replaced by this material artificial material calcium fluor uh, fluorophosphate okay then uh, where is fluorine extracted uh, from fluorine is basically extracted from uh, from the one mineral that is fluorospar fluorospar that is calcium fluoride only CaF2 and uh, other fluorine bearing materials can be apatite and uh, also apatite means just as we discussed fluorapatite Ca whole 5 uh, Ca5 PO4 whole thrice F this is the fluorapatite or trilite also and uh, it is mined in China, Mongolia, Russia, Mexico, South Africa, these countries in these countries. Now the hydrolysis of hydrogen fluoride uh, in in, uh, in electrolysis of hydrogen fluoride, the cathodic and anodic compartments are separated by uh, diaphragm steel scots membrane or uh, uh, none of the above. So the correct answer is steel scots. Steel scots. So I will show how does it look. Cathode and cell are usually cathodic cells 
are made uh, of monyl alloys, uh, alloys and um, uh, anodes are actually degraphitized carbon. So the reaction, electrode reactions. electrolysis of in case of electrolysis of HL the electro lights Mixture of HF plus potassium hydrogen dichloride KHF2. Then the cells electrode reactions are plus pink cation will go to cathode having negative potential so cathode reaction k plus will take one electron to become potassium Potassium plus two HF two potassium. So two K plus H two. So hydrogen gas will be evolved through cathode. Then anode. Anion F minus will go in the anode. So F2 will be evolved through anode. Okay. Now, in this electrolysis of HF, uh, we have used KF, right? Because this HF to fluorine gas conversion, like what does it mean by electrolysis? Electrolysis means splitting the constituent ions, splitting the species into its constituent ions and then generating some gas, right? Some gaseous material. But here, in case of hydrogen fluoride, this hydrogen fluoride is extremely stable among all the um, halogen uh, acids halogen acids like uh, HCl, HBr, HF HF is the strong 
um, like the, it, it is the most stable species and it is the least acidic although fluorine has highest electronegativity but still HF bond dissolution energy will be most high highest so uh, this uh, HF will not be easily splitted easily electrolyzed to give rise to hydrogen and fluorine so to increase its electrolysis tendency we will add some uh, some kind of salt containing the same ions so we have used KF potassium fluoride which will increase uh, increase its dissolution by forming one salt kind of uh, species like KHF2 potassium uh, hydrogen bifluoride and then dissolution of HF will be more and as well as uh, its uh, electrolysis will be also easier so and also here we will use some here we will use some this and steel scars it is actually some separation uh, boundary only but uh, better boundary than this diaph um, uh, than this diaphragm or a membrane kind of boundary this is the better boundary steel scars means actually nothing it is uh, some kind of protection okay like uh, some asbestos kind of thing i will show in uh, other slides and uh, then uh, there what we will generally do the cathode will be um, the, the anode will be placed anode, uh, anode material like uh, any metallic material and then cathode will be separated from the anode material by that uh, steel uh, scars like um, some some coat uh, some some uh, coating of asbestos uh, fibers will be made on the cathode and then anode will be the metal, metallic material only but it will be separated uh, from the cathode by this steel scars so that is um, the designing of the electrolytic cell and moving to the next question why fluorous power and cryolite are added during the extraction of aluminium so these are the options to lower the melting point of aluminium to make alumina a good conductor of electricity cryolite acts as a solvent for alumina so option is uh, correct answer is all of the above because cryolite and fluorous pairs. these two uh, minerals are added to uh, alumina to do all of this above okay and cryolite means as we all know na3 cryolite means what na3 na3 pure fluid i think uh, cryolite uh, na3 This is the cryolite. Um, so, this is actually one fluorite containing materials, and this acts as a good solvent for alumina, and also it will make alumina a good conductor of electricity, and it will lower the melting point of alumina. So, to do all these things, cryolite and fluorospar both are added. Now, what is the co-product formed in the production of phosphate fertilizers? Silicon dioxide, hexafluorosilicic acid, calcium fluoride, none of the above. So, hexafluorosilicic acid is the correct option. Uh, this is actually hexafluorosilicic acid means H2SI F6. Hexafluorosilicic acid is added as a byproduct in the production of phosphoric uh, acid from this one calcium uh, like appetite calcium phosphate with uh, sulfuric acid as we uh, already discussed uh, how do we produce how do we produce phosphoric acid from calcium phosphate containing appetite materials CA3PO4 Onto plus H two is four. 
giving rise to three C A S O four plus two H three P O four. Right. This is the production of phosphoric acid. Silicon impurity in apatite will produce H two Si F six as side product. So the next question how does graphite fluoride form by the reaction of fluorine gas with carbonate chili so graphite fluoride is formed by high temperature reaction of fluorine gas with graphite charcoal pyrolite carbon powder the properties of graphite fluoride vary with the ratio of carbon and fluorine um, content in it then uh, these materials has high thermal stability and it is uh, an excellent electrical and thermal insulator free from corrosion by strong acid and alkali and it has high uh, ultra high lubricating performance graphite fluoride materials low fluorinated graphite has a gray black appearance and poor thermal stability usually it is not used as lubricant then which one of the following graphene is formed when a green uh, when grown on a copper foil exposed to xcf2 at 30 degrees centigrade so xcf2 and copper foil we are using by the production of graphene so fluorographene will be formed fluorographene is a fluorocarbon derivative of graphene it has two dimensional carbon sheet of sp3 hybridized carbon each carbon is linked with one fluorine atom and it was first described in 2010 by Robin Chanetal using graphene grown on copper foil exposed to xenon difluoride at 30 degrees centigrade. So, then moving to the next question what is the raw material for electrolytic manufacture of aluminum? That is the aluminum fluoride. So, ALF3. H2 these are actually colorless solid and anhydrous LF3 also is used in production of aluminum material uh, this is the hydrolyzed one and anhydrous material is also used aluminum fluoride is an important additive for the production of aluminum uh, by electrolysis only then together with cryolite it lowers the melting point to below 1000 degrees centigrade and increases the conductivity of the solution. So it is into this molten state that aluminum oxide dissolved and then electrolyzed to give bulk aluminum material. So these are some questions I I selected to discuss for this fluorine containing materials. Now if you have any question further you can ask in discussion forum or you can mail me also. So that's all. I will upload these materials and slides uh, in the in the Google form, and I will share with you. And you can follow my YouTube channel also for the recorded video. So that's all. Thank you.